Hey everybody, what's up? It's Rob Jones with Sineway Specialties, and it has been a long ass time. Oh, I feel like my fingertip scraping across this thing is like my life in college during COVID 19. Oh, making an extra $15 a day, still going to work during the school, gaining an extra 15 pounds a week, eating like we don't care. But hey, it's neither here nor there. Today we have a fun one. LEDs. They're everywhere. Everybody is using LEDs. Everything is using LEDs, but eh, most people don't know how they work. Today I'm making little 12 inch well, yeah, 12 inch bars. They have 12 LEDs. One LED per bar. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna put white lights in here and there's a shop called Wolf Lab Engineering in Toledo, Ohio. Right down the road from where I'm working at, and they have a 70 Buick. Yeah, one of the big land yacht kind of vehicles. Well, the whole trunk is trash, as you can imagine. It's got one of them weird jacks in the back, like a lift jack. A bunch of American-based junk audio, VFL audio. You know, the kind of stuff you get from, like, Walmart's website. It's, it's, it's just, you just don't put it in without a fire extinguisher, because it's either... Either that or take like 20 fuses with you. You know, it's just as bad as the car without being modernized. Which, in fact, that's what they're doing is they're going to modernize the car. So what I'm doing is I'm going to rebuild the entire trunk. I'm take this LED bar and all these are white lights. I'm putting it inside of a channel. And it's going to diffuse white light through the trunk using a trunk pin. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, are these 12 volt LEDs? No. LEDs are not 12 volt. They're not any volt. As a matter of fact, I could hook these LEDs up to, if I choose to, 480 volt single phase if I wanted to. How in the fuck do I do that, you might wonder. Well, it's really, really simple, actually. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk. Oh, got to unplug some shit here. Hang on. Get the blue gun going. And. Let's go with you know, a little back camera angle here. You got all this whacked out stuff going on. Hang on. Alright, good guys, man. Had I known it was going to take that much of a delay, a little bit of light here, to actually get the camera all set up, oh, shit, I probably wouldn't have done it. So, as you can see, we have diffused LEDs here, 5 millimeter, and they are all bright white. These are some knockoff eBay ones. Do I know how good they're going to work? Eh. Eh. Ooh. Probably better than this goddamn stand well. Um. But anywho. So the way these are going to work is I'm going to stick this 12 inch bar in the wall of the trunk here and the here. Left and right side fenders. And what that's going to do is as he opens up the trunk, light is going to shine down in. You don't have to have that weird incandescent dome light thing going on which nobody wants because the bulbs always blow out. They're high, high draw for amperage and it's, it just doesn't work. But like I was saying, these are not voltage specific bulbs. Bulbs or LEDs are not voltage devices. They are constant current devices. So what ends up happening is this is rated on a website, let's say for point we'll say 0 0.013 amps. Well, okay, so that's great. And then it says anywhere from 1.5 to 3.3 volts. That's great. We are not concerned about the voltage because the voltage does not matter. Some people are gonna tell me, oh, well, you know, I blow them all the time. Well, you probably had the wrong, you know, resistor hooked up to it. In the case of these, if I run these, at, let's say in a car, 14.4 volts. I will hook up a 1000 ohm resistor to them and it'll work just fine. If I hook these into the wall, I can hook up a 9.5K, so 9500 ohm resistance, and I can hook it right into the wall. 120, I mind you. I don't know about you 220s out there and all that stuff, but 9.5 ohm or 9.5K will allow me to hook one of these into the wall and have no issues. You're going to say, oh, what AC? Yeah, don't forget these are bulbs, but they're also diodes first. First and foremost, they're diodes. Nowadays, we just use them because it's fun. All 
Alright kids, we are going to go over the LEDs. Okay, so what is an LED first off? LED is a light emitting diode. Now, what that means is that power can go through it, but not back the other way. How do we decide what kind of power we want to put in there? Well, let's say for all instant all intents and purposes, let's say a car. Now we don't want to undervalue our resistor set, so we're going to say 14.5 volts DC. That means direct current. Wall has AC, cars have DC. So we're going to say 14.5 so we don't underrate our setup. And now what we need to figure out is we have an LED that requires, if you read on the website, it'll tell you the, re the LED's maximum current. That max current, we'll say in this case, 0 0.020 amps or 20 milliamps. Now, when we go to check out this right here, we got to decide, we know our volts, we know our current max, or volt max, current max, now we need to figure out our resistance. Okay, we're going to add a resistor, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the derivative of Ohm's law, which is V equals I times R. That is volts equals current times, you know what, we'll say ohms here, we won't call this current, we'll call this the most common, I'm trying to make this simple, amps. So, we know this one, we know this one, we don't know this one. So, we're going to say 14.5 volts equals 0 0.020 amps times ohms. Now, take it in big consideration. This right here, standard units is amps. If you have it in milliamps, 20, it will not be correct. Everything needs to be in volts, amps, ohms. So let's say you have one that's 1,000 ohms. You will not put 1K. It will be 1,000. Now that we have this, we need to bring this over. We got 14.5 divided by 0 0.020 equals ohms. Bring out our calculator here. Fourteen point five divided by zero point zero two zero equals we have seven hundred and twenty-five ohms. The maximum power you are going to get out of that LED is going to be accomplished when it is 14 and a half volts, it is going to be 725 ohms. That is how you're going to get the max brightness out of it. However, you will not get the max life out of it. You must keep in consideration that when you get a 725 ohm resistor, you have a number of tolerances. You move this over slightly so you can see the new part. You're going to have a set of tolerances. You have 1%, 5%, 10%, etc., etc., etc. Okay, these are distinguished by the color bands on your resistor. Now, if we get a 725 ohm resistor, 725 plus or minus 725 times 0 0.10 is how we figure out the 10%. So when we do 725 times 0 0.010, we get 72 and a half ohms. So 725 plus or minus 72.5. It can go up or down that much. So, that is why when typical cars run at like 14.2, 14.3, we run at 14.5 to assume a higher voltage. 
So in this case, we can compensate for the possibility that if you have a really shitty resistor, you have a really shitty situation. So you pick the shitty voltage. Make shitty sense? Good. Now that we have figured out how resistors work, we are going to get these LEDs put back into position. We ended up with the glue dry, so we got a little math lesson there. These have to be perfect? Eh, not really, but you will have to work with them if you don't make them perfect. Some of you are wondering, well, what the fuck is this crap? Well, this, my friends, is Surebonder Black Hot Glue. And it works wonderfully. And in today's world, you know, we have a little diversity to remind everybody that we're all just in it for the win. That and this stuff works the greatest, so I care less what it is. And this will hold it in place. I get everything else nice and tied up. Besides, this is all going to be inside anyway. This isn't going to be near a weather seal or anything crazy because I'm building the trunk walls inward of what they should be in. So, as long as I do that, I will not have to worry about which place I put the lights or the resistors or any of the other components. Now, We're going to get all this done. We're just going to let it dry. Maybe if I'm lucky, it's not really my shop, but maybe I can get some some photos and maybe a little bit of video explaining what I'm doing when I'm over at the, uh, the other place. Um, for the, uh, those of you that don't know, you'll notice here one leg is shorter than the other on these diodes. See that? See how little offset? That? that short one is your negative. Long one is your positive. When that, was, that resistor thing we were just talking about, it doesn't matter what side you put the resistor on. The flow of current is going to be resisted either way. But you need to make sure the correct resistor is on there for the correct voltage. When you look up LEDs as a recap, look at the maximum current. Voltage does not matter. I can run this LED on a vape battery, say an 18650, which is the same thing they put in the Tesla cars, or an 18950C, to be com completely technically correct. What it does is that resistor brings the current down so it doesn't explode. It does not need to be the same voltage. I can run this grinder sitting right here on the same voltage I run these LEDs on. This has a certain resistance, this has a certain resistance. As long as you have the resistance correct, you will have a working LED. Now, when you get into like things say voltage rectifiers, step down transformers, that is because the resistor, when you plug it say into the wall, is going to get very hot. And if you haven't noticed before that most electronics don't get severely warm. And that is because they have step down or buck converters or whatever it takes to get the voltage down to a stable amount then you put smaller resistors on there there it completely reduces the heat and that's when you get into things like voltage rectifiers which you have a specified input voltage range and a specified direct output other than that oh man god I tell you if you're not working 70 hours a week, you aren't going to succeed. It's just not going to happen. Nobody wins on 40 hours a week. And if you think you do, you, you're, you're not working to your full potential. You just got kind of lucky or you found exactly the right kind of job. But, I mean, if you want, if you want to be up in the millions, don't ever take a day off. A day off is a wasted day. All that stuff with drugs, alcohol, weekend parties... It's just not there, especially if you got goals. Stick to your goals. Always stick to your goals. All right, next video we'll make will include the resistor hookups, and you will get to see how I am going to do it. I'm not going to put a resistor on every one of these lights. That's a waste of money. And I will show you how I plan on doing it without doing that in the next video.
Peace.